Hello guys, my name is Anna and today my home city was hit with two Russian missiles killing three civilians. I have started vlogging at the beginning of brutal Russian invasion to keep you updated on what is life in Ukraine during these challenging times and also speak about Russian war crimes. If you support Ukraine, please subscribe. This is the easiest way to demonstrate your solidarity and spread information. We need that a lot. So today I woke up to really bad news. My city Lutsk was targeted with missiles, some factory was destroyed and what is worse, three people were killed. Those of you who follow me for a certain period of time know that I live in what is considered a safe zone in Ukraine, in the western part, close to the European Union border and Belarus border, in the center of Volyn region. We rarely have missiles hitting our city or our region, but you see it happens and the results are really tragic. Three men who were working on the factory were killed in the result of explosions caused by two Russian missiles, 27, 52 and 55 years old. It happened at dawn because Russian terrorists typically choose the time when people are especially vulnerable. One more thing that I would like to start with is actually the fact that Ukraine is dangerous everywhere. So those of you who feel seducted and want to travel and experience and so on, I do advise you to travel and experience all the beautiful sides of my country after the victory. And what we can do now is unite and try to make this victory closer. But so far it is dangerous, even Ukrainians who are trained with air raid alerts and how to behave in different situations make mistakes because everything is always very dynamic, everything often happens at night when you're not able to think reasonably and um, there are some things that you can never predict. So even Ukrainians with this like a year and a half of war life and constant, I cannot say trainings because these are real life situations, but anyway, make mistakes, die, uh, or Russians try to organize um, attacks the way to cause more harm to civilians, to children, to infrastructure. So please take your time and stay away from even semi-safe zones like mine because Tonight, Lviv region was also targeted and civilian districts, uh, people were wounded. So you see, um, now I will share with you my experience, what I was doing during that time, how did I feel and I have to confess, I was sleeping. I am a sound sleeper. I have always considered it to be a good quality, <laughs> but when you live in a war zone, it can be a deadly quality. So I did not wake up during the air raid. I did not hear it. I have it on my phone, but I do not set my whole phone really loud. You will not hear it from the outside if your windows are closed and we all have modern windows. So um, the factory is not close to me and I did not hear the explosion anything. Once again, I will not take you to this location because it's not really wise to show everything. I have shared some photos on the community tab, but they do not demonstrate the location. We are advised by security services for a certain period of time not to, to share anything because it can help Russians correct the fire, uh, shoot more missiles and cause more harm. So uh, honestly, I am surprised at how good uh, people in my city are on Facebook, on Instagram, you will not find any photos that like reveal serious locations or the damage that was caused. And honestly, before I went out of my house, I could not identify which factory was targeted because you could not find it online, in the news, um, in on the forums, in the comments, anywhere. And it's only that when you went out on the street, you can, could hear people talking. Like, of course, it goes without saying that everyone is talking about that. And um, people were naming uh, the factory. Of course, um, like people were working there because there are night shifts. And it seems to me 
the um, terrorist act happened close to 5 a.m which once again demonstrate how inhumane they are in everything that they do i'm sure you will understand like the reasons why i'm not taking you to that location or i'm not explaining what are the potential reasons for targeting this uh, factory because the only real reason is russia is a terrorist state and it wants to erase Ukraine as a country, as a culture, and all of its people, including beautiful children and fluffy animals that lived close to Kohovka Dam, for example. Russians are monsters. Russians are orcs. In my Facebook everywhere, I see photos of those men who went to work on the factory, believing they live in a semi-safe zone, in a safe zone. But now they are dead and they are victims of Russian war in Ukraine. Uh, many of you will say that you have to run to uh, bomb shelters. People who live close to front zones and who are targeted daily, severely, do that. Some of them live for weeks, think about that, for weeks in such shelters. Uh, people in Kyiv lived in underground for weeks. Um, in uh, the cities and villages close to the front lines, people stay in their own cellars for days without sunlight because Russia is a terrorist state and wants to kill every Ukrainian. And the reason for them to kill us is just because we are Ukrainians. So, but the far away you go from the front line, um, the fewer air raids you will hear, uh, they rarely target uh, objects and people uh, lose this grasp and start living their life once again if you have like two three five air raids a day and there are lots of things that you want to do you will not spend all of that time in a bomb shelter and another thing that maybe uh, like you don't want to know but uh, you have to and even if you think about your own country you will understand that there are not so many well-designed bomb shelters. We have to realize that. Since the times of Cold War, various official uh, buildings that were used by, I don't know, Communist Party or some hospitals that were built in times of Cold War, they were built and designed with serious like bomb shelters below these buildings with really wide walls protecting even from a nuclear explosion. But the majority of modern buildings, houses, dwellings, cafes, banks, they are built according to modern standards and of course they don't have bomb shelters. Think about your street in your town. How many bomb shelters do you have? And you will be surprised to know that very, very, very few. And those cellars that we are advised to hide in aren't always the best place. Why? Because they are not built as bomb shelters. They are just below the ground or parking lots, for example, underground parking lots. These are huge spaces with just a few columns. And sometimes when something really bad happens, a building collapses, thus killing those people who thought they were hiding, but maybe they would have been safer outside. And many people don't want to be buried alive. So if you don't have like many options, they choose this rule of two or three walls, you know, that like often your bathroom can save you or your corridor can save you. For example, I go into the corridor. I have a cellar in my house, but it has windows. So you understand that like, and the closest bomb shelter is like pretty far away and no one in a pyjama uh, without contact lens will start running to a bomb shelter. And for example, in the winter, when the last 100 air raid alerts did not result in anything. But this can cost life because Russia is a terrorist state and it wants to destroy Ukraine and then continue destroying other democracies all over the world. Understand that, accept that. Don't hide in your thoughts that maybe there is something we can do, something we can negotiate. No, they have to be stopped, persecuted. Some of them hangs in The Hague, I'm sorry. And this will not compensate people who are dying daily. And once again, I don't advise you to 
travel to Ukraine. If you want to know more and demonstrate your solidarity, for example, subscribe because the more viewers we get and uh, the more people see and share this information, the more support we get and we need your support. We are very grateful for that support. But remember, Russia has military factories and plants. They continue building, constructing missiles daily. They get their supply without any um, support from other countries. They buy some elements despite sanctions, but they are capable of doing missiles by themselves and they do them in hundreds. Ukrainians receive them, receive them in dozens after months of negotiations. It's just like this F-16. We kind of have them, but we don't. We will have them one day after, like, it, it typically takes lots and lots of months before it is announced and when we receive it. And I'm sure you understand looking at what happened in Lviv today, looking at what happened in my hometown, Lutsk today, that the majority of Ukrainian cities do not have normal air raid defense. Most of it is in Kyiv. Why? Because we don't have enough missiles and technologies that are needed for this iron dome all over Ukraine. Some priorities are set and, for example, my city is definitely not a priority. Which means lives of people who live in my city, including mine, is not a priority. Because Ukraine wants too much. Mm -mm. We pay with our life, with our territory, with our blood. And it's not just about Ukraine. It's about the world. It's about the democracy. It's about freedom. You know, Putin constantly says that he hates West, that he hates NATO countries, that he hates democracies. And um, don't think it's just about Ukraine. No, never. And we have to win this war together. Thank you so much for your support and understanding. Thank you for so many messages that you've sent me asking if I'm fine. I'm fine as a person can be in a war zone, learning that three of her um, neighbors in her city died at work because they are Ukrainians and Russia is a terrorist state. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, for your subscriptions, for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. Follow me on Instagram, Threads, Discord and Twitter. All the links are below. Slava Ukraini!